more Cheerio. Yeah? <laughs> you think you ate it? Did you- you forgot? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> See ya, Sonic. So long, sucker. Oh. So long, sucker. Those are the least intimidating spikes. Yeah. It's just one spike. <laughs> I mean, I guess you one. Touch it? Oh no! One spike is all it takes, I guess. <laughs> I mean, to be fair. Oh no. So now I I greatly uh, prefer this particular Sonic the Hedgehog hack to the original game uh, for the sole reason that having tails means that you can get through the labyrinth zone so much more easily. Um, I don't know if you've ever played the original Sonic, but there's a water level that is hell on Earth. Water it levels is... in any game are awful. Well, some games have they're very... Pretty. Mm -hmm. They're pretty, but they're difficult. It's like the ice level, too. Right. Well, some games have some pretty fun water levels, but in Sonic games, they're awful because Sonic doesn't know how to swim. And, you know, his superpower is speed, but you're not able to take advantage of his speed when you're underwater. So you, you slow down to a crawl, and then on top of it, you have to worry about your air. And so now you're moving extra yeah, slow. It's, it's like, like five different things that you gotta worry there, about. It's awful, but Tails being able to swim helps you get through that level like no problem. It's so much better. Did you ever watch those, uh, those Sonic... Paradox. Uh, which like uh, shorts, the paradox shorts. I don't think I did. No, it, they sound familiar, but I don't believe I ever watched them. Really, I'm surprised. I uh, maybe I did. I don't know. Oh, hey, hey, look, Chris is back. Chris, Chris, Chris exists in our reality again. Uh, so we decided, uh, Jazz decided to go to sleep. She wasn't feeling all that well, so we we started streaming a playthrough of Sonic the Hedgehog. And, yeah. <laughs> um, Chris, now that you're back, uh, uh, Bex can tell the, uh, the craft dinner story yes, that she wanted so badly story. to tell. <laughs> so, I went... What's that? You know the craft you dinner the story. Craft you were there for story. it. <laughs> you're, the one, you're the one who sent it to me. Oh, uh, I, I thought we were talking about a different one. So, yeah, to, to start off with, <laughs> yes, to start off with, if you haven't guessed yet, say Bex lives in, in Canada and... Chris decided to send her a gift, and what is the thing, what is the, the the most Canadian thing he could possibly give her as a gift, but send her a box of Kraft Dinner in the mail? Extra creamy. Extra creamy Kraft Dinner, no less. <laughs> the best of the best. So, you gotta get the best. Yup, and so I was, I was going to pick it up, and the lady brings the package, and I rattle oh, it. And she's just like, oh, that's craft dinner. <laughs> and I just look at her. She has the biggest, stupidest grin on her face. She's like, and she's once so again, again, once again, I say there is nothing more Canadian than recognizing <laughs> that it's a box of Kraft macaroni and cheese just from the rattling sound, and then to have a manic look of absolute glee on your face at the promise <laughs> right? therein. <laughs> It's like what the what the hey, wait? Do I still have to watch what I say? What yes. the what the he double hockey mm. sticks, man? <laughs> that's even more Canadian because hockey. It's, that's why I said it. <laughs> we're just going all out Canadian in this episode, eh? So how we're gonna talk this way yeah. for the rest of the episode? Oh man, I've gotta go give myself some, some Timmy's. <laughs> get yourself some wedding. Eh? Some Timmy's. I gotta go get some Timbits and a double-double. Some Jimmy's you don't know? What are you talking about? <laughs> you're so not Canadian. Either, either you're drunk or I'm drunk. I don't know what's going on anymore, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's job, it is... He's already got four. It is yeah. the staple. Hey, I... It is the staple of, the, of this... Uh... Of, of this country. What, so what Tim are Jimmy's? Horton. Explain Jimmy's. No, not Jimmy. I think it's Jimmy's. A... Tim Hortons. Oh, Let's Jim see. Hortons. Oh. <laughs> no. no. I think it's a Jim Hortons, Tim like the restaurant chain. Hortons. What are you talking about? <laughs> you li 
Oh, that's right. You're in America. I'm in... Yours, yours, yours would probably be a bootleg of it. It's called Jim Awards. <laughs> Jim Awards? Jim Awards? Jim Awards. I don't know if that's what she really said, but I'm sticking to it because it makes me laugh. <laughs> no! With a T! Timmy's? Yes! Okay, Timmy's. Timmy. Okay, so what is Timmy's? What is Timmy's? It's Tim Horton. Oh, Tim Horton. That's what we call. That's right, Tim Horton. Okay, sorry. Wow! I'm sorry. I said Jim. I said Jim. Five I said Jim Hortons, but that's right. It's Tim Hortons. And I, we we do have that restaurant chain here. I just it's been like for, it's been ages since I've seen. Oh, I thought one. Matt was joking. No, it's like, a real I thing. He was like purposely like. <laughs> I couldn't tell if he was serious or not. No, Jim Hortons is a real chain. Uh, my my grandmother used to absolutely love it. It used to be one of her favorite restaurants. <laughs> Jim Hortons. Yeah, Tim Tim Hortons. Sorry, I keep I keep saying okay. yeah. Good old, that's like the bootleg version of Tim Hortons. <laughs> Jimmy. Well, that's again. That's the. Jim that's Jim Hosers. Oh, God, man, we're on... okay. I was I was going to say this the bootleg American version, but if you had hoser, sorry, we're right back to Canada now. <laughs> Ours would be like Jimmy Boys no, or something. <laughs> Jim Boy. Jim Boy. Yeah, Jim Boy. Jim Boy and Bobby Lee, <laughs> something Jim like that. Jim Boy and Bobby Lee, Mary Jane, and all that. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm gonna get the Chaos Emerald in this level because I've only got like four rings oh, right now. Oh gosh! However, will we survive without all seven Chaos Emeralds? Well, have fun there, Sonic. Then. <laughs> <laughs> he's having a he's having a wonderful time in that lava. <laughs> Whoa! Oh boy! Here we go. Okay, this is the boss level anyway, so I couldn't have gotten the, the special stage. Oh, yeah, you missed it. I said something really stupid just before the. <laughs> yeah, because Bex never does that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, said some honking bonking stonkery, just something like that. <laughs> Yeah, bonk and bonk and stonkers. That's that's now an adjective to describe something that is in fact honk and bonk and stonkers, or if, perhaps it may not be. It may not be stonkers in of itself, but it's pretty darn close, you know. <laughs> add, we need to add that needs to be added to the uh, to the new English lexicon, you know. Yes. <laughs> what was I saying, like? last night, or was it this morning? I can't remember. Me and you were laughing about it, though, uh, Chris. Uh, what was it? There's something really stupid. Uh, do you remember the, like, the... Hmm. It was like, it was something related to Honk and Bonk and Stalkers, but it was dumber <laughs> for some reason. It was well, just more uh, ads than Knowing you, it was either a variation of Honk and Bonk and Stalkers or Unga Bunga. <laughs> That's about... Unki <laughs> Bunga! <laughs> We've, we've transcended into Ungi Bungi. Ungi Bungi. <laughs> ungi Bungi Bungi. <laughs> ah, darn it. I think it was something Unga Bunga related. I forget what it was. Hmm. Ingi Bingi? <laughs> ingi Bingi. Ingi Bingi. <laughs> and me being the, the dork who loves like old media and, and vaudeville entertainers and stuff, I just think of like Jimmy Durante singing Inka Dinka Doo, you know, it's like Inka Binga Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like something like Clonkin' Gadonkin' Bonkin' Gadonkin'. <laughs> You've turned it into a whole other language now. <laughs> it's. It's like language. it's like that it's Rolf. It's like that Rolf and Jimmy Dean sketch I told you about, where Rolf was like, "I'm an honorary Indian now," and he's like speaking so-called Native American languages, and it's like Wonka, Wonka, Zonk, Zonk, or whatever. He's like <laughs> clearly <laughs> making it up as he goes. Hoga Suma Kuma Lak Zonk. Wait, I... No, that's Swedish Chef. That's 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 a completely no, different Lee nonsense Erickson language. Day. What? It's Lee Erickson Day. Oh, it is, is it Lee Erickson Day? No, I don't know. I was like, I know if it is, then we all should have been speaking mock Swedish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's another another favorite Muppet Show bit. Is um, I think I told you about. There's 
there's one where their guest star um, says they're very disappointed with the Swedish chef, and they ask why, and she says, because I actually know how to speak Swedish, and the Swedish chef is not really speaking Swedish. It's, it's nonsense. He's speaking mock Swedish. And Kermit's like, what? He's a fraud. Bring him on. I'm going to talk to him right now. And the chef comes out. He's like, yeah, Mr. Kermit, don't you see? You know, and, and Kermit like starts <laughs> chewing him out like, how dare you? You've made a mockery of this show. And, and you're an insult to, to, the, to the real Swedes everywhere. And the Swedish chef like starts faking like he's crying and stuff. And then he turns to the guest star and Chris mumbles something else. Yeah, but you're just parking hard again and everything. And she goes, oh, that's okay, chef. And she says, the chef tells me that he's very upset for lying about his heritage. And he knows it's wrong. And from now on, he's only going to speak his native language. And Kermit says, oh, good. What is his native language? Mock Japanese. <laughs> so then he's like, chong ching chung chong. <laughs> <laughs> no! So he just goes from one made-up language to another. It's really funny. Mildly Kerm racist puppet. <laughs> no, but again, that's not even like... It's not even really racist. It's just the joke of we're making it up because we don't know the language. So it's like that ching <laughs> chong chingy chong not... chong. <laughs> Bing bong ching chong. I don't know. You know? Bingity hingity. Honestly, if you want to, if you want an episode, I'm I'm really surprised that this episode is actually on Disney Plus. Like, I don't, I don't have Disney Plus. I'm not, I'm not a fan of streaming I services. I, I'm not a big fan of streaming services because I feel like it's you end up having to pay way more money than you need to if you want to have all the services, and they can take shows off at any given time or edit bits out and ruin them for you. I just, I don't like it. I'd much rather have. A legit collection on physical media but that's me that's just me being me but um on disney plus they have the muppet show and there's some episodes i think there's like one that's missing and a few episodes have been edited but there's one that i am super surprised is actually like available for streaming um and it's one where because kermit has discovered that the muppet show is being broadcast in like how many countries I hear he, he really he, he says they discovered that the show's being broadcast like all these different countries. So to celebrate, they're going to do an episode that is a salute to the nations of the world. And every single sketch is going to be something where they honor a different country where the show is being broadcast. And every single sketch unintentionally turns out to be incredibly offensive. It's one of the funniest one of the funniest episodes of all time. And, like, if you watch the show, if you understand the Muppets, you know there is no offense meant. The whole joke is they're really... The whole joke is they're failing. Speaking of failing, we're doing badly here. But the whole joke is they're, you know, they're failing at it. Like, they're trying really hard to be respectful, but they're messing it up. But, like, in, I'm just so convinced, like, no, Disney would have been like, no, people will be offended, we can't air this one, but that's the one they air. But then the, but then the one that's not, that's actually not on there, I don't remember what it is, but it's not on there for such a ridiculous reason. You're like, really? That's the one you were afraid people would be offended by? But all that said, no, the, the Nations of the World episode is really funny. Because they are trying so hard to be respectful to all these different countries. And every time, they end up doing something <laughs> so offensive. And Kermit's like, oh my god, what have we done? <laughs> it's really, really like funny. Like racist <laughs> Well, because on top of it, on top of it, they have um, the guest star in that episode. Is it Spike Milligan? I can't remember. He, he was a British comedian who was known for being really irreverent. So, like, he's purposefully trying to be insulting while they're trying to keep him under control. It's really funny. You'll have to steal your yeah. oh, English failed me. Call that, call that language, uh, Bex can't talk right. <laughs> Bex can't talk right. <laughs> Well, that may be the title of the episode if we haven't already come across yet another in one of your many Bexisms. <laughs> Bexisms. Bexes, many I, Bexisms. I think we may just. Oh, no, darn it. I think I may just call one episode Let's Get Drunk and Fight, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh my god.
Listen, listen. <laughs> I keep wanting to- I don't know why, but I keep wanting to call this, like, mildly racist <laughs> Mildly racist <laughs> Muppets. <laughs> Muppetly racist. <laughs> Muppetly racist Miles. Or Muppetly mild racists. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, though, seriously, like, I get, like, again, like, as I've moved so much, and I've known so many different types of people, and in so many different places, whenever I hear stuff like, oh, that's mildly racist, even, I'm like, oh, that's not racist. I can show you racist. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, have I seen racist. Oh, jeez. Well, I'm sure you have. Like, it's just really fun to say, uh, apparently now, muppetly racist muppets. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm always like the, no, joke that haha -ha foreign language sounds funny to me. There's nothing, there's nothing racist about that. Foreign languages do sound funny no. if you don't understand them. But this joke, oh no, this joke is racist. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, um, <laughs> so, oh my gosh, they're, um, I don't know how, <laughs> for my own sake, I don't know how much I'll uh, say of this one, but um, anyone who knows about um, history of animation, especially Warner Brothers animation, knows that there are 11 Warner Brothers cartoons that have been banned from television since the early 90s. They're called the Censored 11. And um, I went to the trouble of like seeking out like all the possible Looney Tunes cartoons that could be found. Like, I, I made it, like, a personal yeah. goal. And I, because of that, I wanted to watch the Censored Eleven. I was like, all right, are they really that bad? And most of them, I have to say, no, they're pretty harmless. Um, there's one where, like, um, Bugs Bunny, like, meets this wild man in, um, in, uh, Australia and like oh apparently that's racist or whatever like no it's just funny it's just like this crazy caveman type guy uh, there's another one where it's oh, like it's, just the Unga Bunga. it's where the Bunga Bunga <laughs> sketch comes from the one where it was like an actual <laughs> conversation any conversation with Bex at any given moment what's up Jack? wow Karinka Unga Bunga Bunga Unga Bunga Bunga Unga Bunga Bunga Unga Bunga Bunga Bunga, inga, binga, binga, bunga. <laughs> uh, there's another one where it's just like it's a cowboys and Indians cartoon, and like Tweety is all the cowboys and Sylvester's all the Indians, and again it's pretty harmless and everything. But there's one um, I won't say the name of it, uh, again, even for my own sake, I'm not going to say the name, but there is one that is a Snow White parody. Let's just put it that way. And, uh, those of you out there will, if, if you know your animation history, you know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> I feel like I do know. You like, probably do. Um, long story short, I don't remember who it was. I want to say it was Bob Clampett. I don't remember. But, um... One of the directors at Termite Terrace, the, the animation studio for Warner Brothers, uh, happened to be friends with several um, black jazz musicians at the time. Uh, this is all cool stuff that I found out because I like looked up the wikis and stuff and all these neat insider information. I was like, oh, it's really cool. So he was friends with a lot of different black musicians at the time. And Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves had just come out. And, you know, as you do when you goof around with friends, you're all making fun of each other and, and stuff. And, you know, you're going to tell jokes with friends you would never say to anyone else, you know. Yeah. So he and his buddies are sitting around and one of the guys says, hey, Disney made Snow White. You should make a black version of it. And they all what? laugh. They all laugh. Oh, wouldn't that be silly? And then one guy's like, yeah, yeah. And, and Dopey will be me. And, and Sleepy will be so-and-so. And and they're like, they're throwing in like all these jokes of, oh, you know, I'll be this character and stuff. And, and oh, you've got to throw in, you need to throw in this stereotype joke. That's really funny. And they're all like giggling about it. Not giving any thought. Their buddies hanging around to the point that eventually, let's say it was Clamp, but I don't remember. Let's, let's say Bob goes, yeah, that's a great idea. We've got to make that cartoon. <laughs> So and lo and behold, he he like comes in like we're gonna make this cartoon and, and from what I've read, I mean this could be wrong, this could be total misinformation, but this is what I read like on the wikis and stuff. 
that like he comes in and he's saying we're gonna make this cartoon and kind of like everyone at the studio was like that's kind of like uh, at first they're laughing at first like oh okay that's funny we're gonna we're gonna spin it around snow white snow black or whatever okay haha you know but then as it goes on they're like bob 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 that's just mean bob we can't do that joke <laughs> and he's like no no it'll be funny it'll be hilarious and uh somehow or other eventually the cartoon gets made and um <laughs> It is the only one of the Censored Eleven that... It was the very first to be of the Censored Eleven because it was removed from theaters immediately when it first came out. Like, it it wasn't like, oh, it ran for a time and, ah, eh, it was the 1930s, no one took offense, that was, you know, acceptable at the time. No, it came out in the 30s and everyone was like, oh my god, what what possessed you to make this? Oh my gosh! A and like joke, the I report, guess. the report apparently is that again they kept being told, you know, no, don't make this. He's like, it'll be funny, just wait and see. Then when the cartoon comes out, Bob goes and gets his buddies. Hey guys, the cartoon's out. We made it just for you. Come on, we're gonna go watch it. So they go to the theater to see, you know, whichever movie it was playing with, and they're like, oh boy, here it comes. And as the thing is playing, they're all like, oh no. Oh no! <laughs> did did we really think this was going to be funny? <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh god! And I just think that's one of the funniest stories. Again, I don't know if that's true. All I have to go on is the you know information. All I know is all the other information on the wiki was correct. So I can only assume that this one's correct too. But just imagining Bob Clampett. I could see it. it. Well, because what makes be the reason why I find it so like jarring, and the reason why a lot of times I'm like, "No, guys, you have to understand the time period." That's that's not offensive if you understand it. Is because like uh, like for instance like uh, the guys at MGM like uh, Johanna, Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera who did like uh, um, Tom and Jerry. Like, a lot of the Tom and Jerry cartoons are considered racist now because of Tom's original owner, who's the old black lady. But people don't realize it wasn't meant to be an offensive stereotype. In fact, the guys there at MGM, um, a big thing with them is they wanted to have a lot of black people involved in the the, the process of making the cartoon. So they had this Did black... Did she black face? Or... No, it's just, she was... That. It, Tom's original owner was this was this uh, old old fat heavy set black lady and she was just she was really funny she was really sassy she'd always get frustrated at the messes that Tom and Jerry would cause and everything yeah. really funny character but like she's considered offensive now because she's what would now be considered kind of a stereotype of like the loud sassy black lady thing but there was no harm meant they just wanted this funny I mean like it wasn't like. It's a stereotype for a reason. It's not a bad stereotype. Yeah, and even then, they just wanted to have know. this... They wanted to have a funny, sassy owner who would get frustrated with yeah. all their mess. And they had this black actress, and she was really <laughs> funny, and they're like, oh, it's gonna be her. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so stuff like that, where like I realized, no, they were friends with these people, and it was all in good fun. And you know, at the time, that would have been a totally harmless joke to make. Like You have to understand the time and the people. Um, so when I heard about this one, you know, Looney Tunes cartoon, I even thought that can't be because like, I know a lot of the guys who were the Warner Brothers animators were the same way. Like they had a lot of black friends. They were like, yeah, we're, you know, we want, you know, we're, we're kind of against a lot of this, you know, segregation and stuff like that that was going on at the time. So <laughs> the idea that they would make this cartoon to be so mean was just so jarring. <laughs> <laughs> then hearing the story, I'm like, yeah, that seems to make sense. <laughs> that, that all makes sense now. There's another I one. I under... Huh? I I... Sorry, it's just something I never understood about this this, this part in the Sonic games. Ah, Why are it. just random birds? Don't, don't worry about it. It's... <laughs> Well, it's your it's your bonus stage. It's not supposed to make a lot of sense. It's just something that's kind of just flashy, and the background's supposed to be distracting to keep you from not paying attention to the maze and all that, you know. Ah, uh, fair enough. Yeah. Also, I like how mean person just like oscillating in her chair. The <laughs> the first Sonic game in the first Sonic game, the Chaos Emeralds weren't even really properly part of the story. They were just there for the fun of it. So it's not like it had to make a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, no, I just I thought that was very funny in that story. Um, what was another one? Oh, no, I was going to say the, the, 
There's another cartoon called All This and Rabbit Stew. Like, you know, like All This and Rabbit Stew, but All This and Rabbit Stew. And um, yeah. that's one that's considered... That's another one of the Censored Eleven. And I can see why um, it was... Throughout, throughout the whole history of the Warner Brothers Animation Studio, they were always trying to, you know, find new characters, find new gags and stuff. It's why, you know... You know, for a while they did, you know, they got tired of Bugs Bunny, so they did Foghorn Leghorn, you know, did all these different things. And um, they tried creating, like, a, essentially a, a black take on Elmer Fudd. Okay, we've got Elmer Fudd, what about a funny black hunter? And I get where they were going with it, but it definitely does come across as racist by today's standards. Uh, because the character was... Um, Again, I forget his name, but he was kind of a spoof of the black comedian at the time who was known for doing the kind of like the whiny voice and he'd shuffle his feet and act all sleepy all the time, um, which now comes across as like, you know, a mean stereotype. And really it's like, no, they were just, there was this one comedian's like routine and they're kind of playing off of him. But the black hunter character comes off as very offensive now if you don't understand the reference. <laughs> But it, yeah, I can imagine. But it's upsetting because it's also one of the funniest Bugs Bunny cartoons. Like some of the pranks he pulls on him are absolutely laugh out loud gold. Um, plus, like there's one bit like I quote it myself many times. Like I don't care if someone's offended by it. It's just funny. There's just a moment where something happens, and like I think Bugs does the thing where like. You know, he, he blocks up the gun barrel and it explodes in the guy's face or something like that. Yeah. Something happens and the guy's clothes get totally blown off. And, <laughs> you know, he's just standing there with just like a little leaf, you know, between his legs. He looks down and goes, well, call me Adam. <laughs> Oh and it's God. it's just That's such a funny good. line. Like I've just always found it incredibly funny, and like I've seen people say that's a racist line. Like that's not racist. It's just funny because see, Adam, he'd be naked. It's funny. Now get the air. I'm trying to get the air. Oh. Aww. I didn't get the big bubble. You lose. Good day, sir.